meal you just saw me make was something that I've been having every morning for the last, well, two mornings. So it's something I'll probably be eating daily. And the reason you guys don't see a lot of carbs in there, a lot of times with my breakfast I've been having toast or a pita, is because my coach Jeff and I have decided that since we have an extra week to diet down for the show because my last show getting canceled, we're just gonna dig and really push myself and kind of experiment a little bit. So we've dropped the carbs as of yesterday or two days ago down to 100 grams per day. Now, I the reason I don't like talking about my macros or anything in videos, it has nothing to do with, people think like I'm embarrassed by having to diet on low calories. It's not like that. I don't wanna give off the wrong impression and people start doing what I'm doing for themselves when they don't realize the extreme of competing and how this is not for everyone. So I'm different than the person next to me, than the person next to them. Every single person requires a different set of macros, a different calorie intake, different training and cardio. It all depends on the individual. So that's the reason why I don't like to talk about it a lot, especially now in contest prep because things do get extreme and the majority of people who aren't competing should not be getting that extreme with their diet. And if they are, I, I think they might need to take a step back because being contest lean is different than being lean. Um, you know, having having abs is even being very lean. So you don't need to be walking around at seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 percent body fat. You have to find where you're comfortable, where you're confident, and if that's maintainable for you and you can sustain that, then cool. But trying to be contest shredded is it's not fun. It's not healthy. So that's the reason why I don't often talk about my macros. But just to give you guys an idea, we're messing with 100 grams of carbs, and then we're gonna have a refeed. See how my body responds to that. And it's not that. A lot of people are probably already thinking my metabolism shot. It's damaged, I'm metabolically damaged and I'm never coming back from it. It's not the case, it's it's metabolic adaptation due to you know not expending as many calories. And NEAT or non-exercise activity thermogenesis, you guys have heard me talk about that before, plays a huge role in your energy expenditure for the day. So as you get more fatigued and more lethargic, your NEAT tends to go down. So you're not as active outside of the gym. All you really wanna do is kinda of lay around and take naps. Uh, not that I do that because I still have work to get done, but I go into the gym, I train, I get my cardio done, and that is the majority of my activity. Now I've been trying to move a lot more. I've been trying to make sure I'm getting more steps in every single day. So if that means going for a walk in the morning or at night, I'm trying to be mindful of that. And, um, and that's just how things are working right now. Yes, I have a slow metabolism. It slows down even more as I'm dieting, but I just wanna share that with you guys. You might see people the week before they get on stage or two weeks before their carbs are still at 200 or even 300 and they can get away with that. I simply can't and I'm doing everything I can to make sure that I'm ready for the show. So if that means digging a bit deeper, dieting a bit harder, doing a bit more cardio, then so be it. I dieted long enough for this and I'm just gonna give it my all. So that's what we're doing here. I'm about to pull up to the gym in just a few minutes and train with Rishi. It's been a pleasure training with him. I'm gonna talk in uh, in the commentary about it all, but he came out to my gym or is coming out to my gym today. I've been going out to Bev's to meet up with him. But we're gonna get a good pull session in and we'll talk to you guys as soon as we get to the gym. I've been getting a lot of requests to do my Hodge Twins intro for some reason, so here it is. Yeah! Back in the gym. All right, so let's jump into the commentary. We are officially one and a half weeks out from the show, which is August 27th, and honestly, I can't wait. It's crazy because I've been having these mixed feelings. You know, as you get closer and closer to the show, you have days when getting out of bed feels like a challenge because of how exhausted you are. But at the same time, you're just so damn excited to keep working harder to bring your best physique possible. You're ready to start the day. You're ready to do work. You're ready to do whatever it takes. And I'm not only talking about in the gym, but you just feel grateful. You feel lucky. You feel blessed. So getting out of bed is actually quite easy, even though you're exhausted. So I've definitely had my share of days when I get nervous when I just look at a flight of stairs. But for the most part, I think I'm handling the prep pretty well because I understand that I am lucky to be able to do this. So I also believe that this extra week was a blessing. So my show getting canceled, which was supposed to be this Saturday, August 20th, was a good thing. So I'm taking advantage of the extra time. I think it gave me the ability to try and get a little bit leaner and I'm just doing what I can with this extra week. So about today's workout, Rishi had made his way over to the gym, which was awesome. And he put Brittany and I through a back workout 
which kicked our ass. So I was feeling flatter than ever, and I struggled to get any sort of a pump, but that was expected. And I actually have had some people ask me, what does that mean? What does feeling flat or looking flat mean? And basically, it just refers to muscle glycogen and water inside the muscle. So you saw, for instance, my pre-workout meal was pretty much zero carbs. I mean, I had the asparagus, and I know I should be eating more before training. It will help my performance a bit, but I'm not going into the gym looking to sit any records or hit PRs. I'm just trying to feel the muscle work and honestly right now it's about sanity for me so saving my carbs for later in the day has been making me feel better and it just helps me sleep. I can never go to bed on a completely empty stomach so if it's helping me adhere to the diet that's what I'm going to do for this next week and a half. But back to the full and flat muscles, full muscles are going to appear more full and more round. So this is when you get a much better pump and you'll actually see more striations compared to being flat when you have a hard time getting a pump because you're depleted. So for instance, you might wake up first thing in the morning looking really lean, but try flexing your bicep or your tricep really hard and it might not pop like you want it to. And it will be more challenging to get like a solid contraction and hold it compared to if you've eaten a few meals, you had some carbs, you drank plenty of water, you would feel and see a difference, especially in the gym. You would notice that your muscles are filling up more and you actually feel the muscle work a lot more. So that's the difference between full and flat. And hopefully that clears some stuff up. And actually, I think that's a good topic for a separate video. But I wanted to quickly talk about social media and how it's helped me with my prep. You know, I've honestly been getting an overwhelming amount of support and I'm beyond grateful for that. There are literally hundreds and thousands of people that I don't even personally know sending me positive vibes, sending me emails and snaps and DMs and tweets and leaving comments on all my posts on Instagram or Facebook, wishing me luck and telling me that my prep is inspiring them in some way and I can't even explain to you guys how that makes me feel. You're all helping me more than you know and even my buddy Rishi who you see in this video, I feel like I've known him my entire life and he's a really close friend of mine and I've actually only met up with him about three times. He actually, he watched my videos over the last few years and when I went to Bev's for the first time, he had introduced himself to me saying that he enjoyed my videos, they helped him get through his prep and he became a great friend and inspiration to me. So I've learned a lot from him as far as training goes, but beyond that, he instilled a lot of confidence in me when I started to feel the self-doubt coming on. And he said that happens with a lot of competitors. As you get closer and closer to the show, you start doubting your physique. You don't feel good enough. You don't feel like you'll be ready in time. But he'll constantly send me texts and reminders letting me know that you know I'm working my ass off and that I will be ready in time. So it's reassuring and it feels good to have someone like that you know, keep, you, keep your mind right. So a few weeks ago, I did not know how to hit a single pose. I had no routine, and to be honest, I was stressed and nervous about the show. And I never shared this with you guys, but I just I didn't know what I was going to do. I tried watching some YouTube videos, and I've had a few people reach out to me and offer to help, but that fell through. And then Rishi offered his help. And after our training sessions, he would sit with me for 30 minutes to an hour, just teaching me, offering constructive feedback, and making sure that I'm ready and I understand how to do this. So he never gets impatient. He just sits there and watches me go through the routine over and over and over again, making tweaks to make sure that I'm doing it right. And he doesn't have to do that. But I'm sharing this with you guys because he's an example of someone who truly loves what they do. He's genuinely passionate and he just expects nothing in return. And those are the kind of people that I like to surround myself with and also share with you guys. People that I think are inspiring to follow. Just good people. And I've been around this industry for quite some time. And I'm pretty damn good at reading people and knowing who's genuine and who's just putting on a show for social media. And I think it's really really important to stay true to who you are because word gets out quick with social media and I think people need to be more concerned with their character rather than their reputation. So think about it this way. Reputation is what others think of you because of what you portray, but character is who you really are. And although there are some people out there who are really, really good at pretending to be someone they're not, Many of us can see right through the bullshit. So just once again, I want to give a huge thank you to Rishi for all of his help, Brittany for her incredible support, and every single person watching this video right now for showing your support. Because honestly, I could not do it without you all. And I'm sorry for all the feels in this video, but this is what was in my head, so I figured I would share it with you guys. So thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it so far, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button and enjoy the rest of it, guys. (laughs) 
6.15, just about dinner time. So what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna cook up some ground chicken. So this is a 98% fat-free ground chicken. So we're gonna do that in the pan. And then I have some yellow squash right here, which is my new, like, one of my go-to vegetables. So it's this, spinach, lettuce, something for a salad, and asparagus. That's kind of what I've been sticking with. Per 100 grams, they tend to be the lowest in calorie. And uh, what I do is I have the oven preheated to 400. I'll just cut off the end of it, cut off this end, cut it down the middle, and then I'll just kind of cut it in like slices like that. I'll do that, I'll probably have like one and a half of these, so a few hundred grams of squash will only be like probably 10 grams of carbs or so. I'll lay them out on here, spray this down, that, and uh, just let them cook probably 15, 20 minutes, season them up with spray butter, and then whatever you want, garlic, salt, pepper, anything like that. So we're doing that, we're gonna do, I'm not sure what I'm doing the ground chicken yet, I'll probably actually have this and a massive salad, because you guys know, Carbs getting low, gotta find ways to keep myself full. So that's what we're gonna do. I'll probably just show you everything when it's all put together because uh, I don't even know what I'm having yet. So as soon as this is all done, we'll talk to you. So we got about 300 grams of yellow squash in that bowl. Some of this I can't believe is not butter spray. So I'm just gonna spray it down a little bit and then throw some of this garlic and pepper on there and then just toss it around in the bowl. and then lay it out on the sheet. And then we're going to toss it in the oven probably 15 to 20 minutes or until it just softens up a bit and then we'll be good to go. Squash is in the oven so while that's cooking I'm going to prepare a salad over here. So I got some baby spinach, some iceberg lettuce, tomato, cucumber. I'll throw some onions in there and then either half or a whole avocado. I think what I'm going to end up doing is using half of this in the salad and then half with whatever I decide to do with the chicken. So, I don't know yet guys, I'm just playing this by ear. So the squash is a couple of minutes left. Show you what I got so far. Salad, topped it with this salsa verde avocado at Bolt House Farms. I also diced up some avocado in there. So we got that. The squash is almost done and the ground chicken is done. So what I decided I wanna do is half of this is gonna go in the salad and then the other half is gonna go on this pita with some buffalo sauce and fat-free cheese. So we're gonna make a buffalo chicken pita pizza. Yeah, so we're gonna take some of this right here on the pita, a little bit of cheese and a little bit more sauce going into the oven, right there. And once that cheese melts, we'll be done. This looks almost done. A couple more minutes, and we can eat. All right, so we're all set. We got our Diet Coke with lime, yellow squash roasted up nice, the buffalo chicken pita pizza, nice and crispy with the melted cheese, and the big salad topped with that ground chicken. So as you can see, it's definitely a decent amount of volume. And that's just something you gotta do when you're dieting. You'll find foods that you really like. You'll find different vegetables that tend to be lower in calories and lower in carbs. So you might have to make some swaps, but it will be worth it when you get bigger volumes of food. So you're gonna eat, watch a bit of YouTube, and then relax. So I think I'm gonna wrap up the night. I'm pretty exhausted. Sorry about the camera. I'm actually using a front facing camera of the iPhone because my batteries are dead. All right, the batteries are dead and they're charging, but I'm just too lazy to get up and get the camera anyway. But kind of just wrapping up the night, I said I was gonna relax, and this is, this is my relaxing. So just working on the couch from the laptop and also watching Shark Tank right now, which is one of my favorite shows. I pretty much watch usually every night for like a half hour at least, so one episode, and then I kind of get hooked in it because they have like multiple episodes playing. I just think it's interesting to see entrepreneurs come on and pitch their ideas, so. That's what I'm gonna do. It's about 10 o'clock now, so I'm actually probably gonna get to bed as soon as this episode's over. I wanna thank you guys as always for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying the videos. You know, we have about a week and a half left, so I'm trying to just get the content out there, share my feels with you all, let you know how everything's going day by day. And uh, yeah, I'm just getting excited as the days come by. So uh, does that make sense? I don't know. 
I'm gonna get to bed in a few minutes. Thanks again for watching, guys. If you enjoyed it, come on! Hit the thumbs up button. Let's get like 5 billion likes. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.